Welcome to October 19th, Minecraft DevSync. Uh, so we're at the start of a new sprint, and um, we're going to go through and uh, do a quick uh, wrap up on the previous sprint, and um, then we'll uh, see what's carried over and uh, what new things we need to add. So, uh, Chris, do you want to share your screen, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, the status of the current sprint? Sure. Hmm. All right, these are just mine. So it looks like those have been done for a while. Um, so yeah, it looks like we got the database schema for UI elements done. Um, and wow, we got a lot of stuff done. Doesn't look like there's a lot. To do with is there some rollover stuff. I guess I don't see a lot of Mark II prototype stuff. But that's <laughs> I don't know if that was expected or not. Or maybe it's uh, not out of, out of line. But. Okay, so let's go through the stuff that isn't done. Uh, I think we can skip the stuff that's in review unless there's anything in there that. Um, uh, people are having trouble with. I guess, yeah, let's go through the review stuff real quick and, and make sure that um, none of that is actually being held up for any reason. Okay, the um, change wake word file naming scheme, uh, the only thing that's holding that up right now is that there's, um, there's a configuration, a pilot configuration I need to make um, to get the to get the, the CI to work. Um, and actually, the, the pilot stuff is something I do want to maybe discuss during our, our summit as well. Um, but anyway, um, once I get that configuration done, then the tests will work, or, or the pilot stuff will pass, and it can be approved. Um, that's the only thing holding that up. Okay. Is it, do you need somebody else's eyes on the pilot issue, or? No, I know exactly what it is. I mean, actually, what, what I'm doing is I'm saving a kind of a global pilot file, pilot config file in our DevOps directory, our DevOps repository, um, and that file can be pulled in using the Jenkins files. Can be pulled into each of our Python um, Jenkins files, and then used to do um, linting. So. Can we put that in a public repo? Uh, we could, but I don't know. Right now, there's no other repo that all of these. The nice thing about the DevOps repo is that all of our Jenkins files reach into there anyway for other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could probably publish the contents of the file somewhere, but the reason it's going in there is just from a, you know, from a processing standpoint, I need it there. Yeah. I might. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get into another thing, but I, st <laughs> <laughs> I may have started a new repo yesterday, um, and I might throw it in there. Uh, but I'll leave it at that and let your anxiety rise. But no, it's, it's a legitimate. It's a legitimate good purpose repo. So don't worry. That sounds right, like so something Michael, you guys should I'm talk look, about. Michael, while I'm looking at this. Can you cut a new ticket for the SJ two hundred one? Rev B enclosure based skill, which would be the code that's or the board that Kevin is sending me tomorrow. Sure. sure. Yeah. So the next one here is actually I think the review is done, but didn't did Ken? Did you say we're just gonna kind of scrap that anyway? 
Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and, and clean it up according to the uh, feedback I got um, and leave it as Rev A, even though you don't like using part numbers as a naming convention. Uh, I will create the abstract base class, though. And then um, Michael's going to create a new ticket for the Rev B version of the board. And um, we can have both of them in our repository, even if we're just using the Rev B version. Um, the difference is we're getting two boards. One is basically jumper configured to work the way the old one did. And the new one is jumper configured <coughs> to do everything over USB. So I, have, I have an update code. on that, but we can talk about it later. Okay, yeah. Why keep the Rev A um, code if we're not going to use it? It's just what's that? One, isn't it? So why keep the so, red acre? Yeah, I, I don't see the benefit of throwing stuff away. Um, in fact, even the re-speaker stuff could be put in there under re-speaker. But yeah, I'm flexible. But all I'm getting at is that this is done only if you consider the fact that it's for the original Rev A board and potentially the one that emulates that tomorrow. So I'm just asking Michael to create a new ticket for the new board. Whether we care to keep them around or not, that's fine. We can throw away code. I don't care. Well, we should talk about that in terms of, you know, maybe it would be better off in a branch. Do we want to handle these things through branches in the code or, you know, separate separate repos? Not a discussion uh, the way for right now. The, the way it's built, especially when it has an abstract days class, is that you just import a ledge, you import switches, you import the class for the volume. And then when you do that, the underlying code based upon a configuration value will bring in the board model version code. And it could have all of them there. Hmm. Uh, and so Chris is just saying, I don't want all three versions, re-speaker, rev A, rev B, I just want the latest. Um, and there's no need to fork it or branch it or anything. Okay, it's just a saying. matter of whether you have three different subdirectories or just the latest subdirectory. It's fine. I, I don't care. Um, okay. What's next on our review process here? Uh, roadmap for initial release to community, Gaz? Uh, yeah, I, I keep wanting to like flesh that out further, but I think I sh we should just publish it as it is and, um, you know, it'll get better over time. Has it been reviewed? Do we need to move it to Does somebody else need to review it or? Uh, it it's it's available there. Like there's a there's an overarching doc, that public document, draft public document there. Um, so if anyone doesn't want that published, then let me know. Otherwise, it's gonna get sent out. Yeah, I I've, I've reviewed it. Um, you know, I think I agree with Gez. We can continue to tweak it forever, but I don't I don't see any harm in getting some feedback now. Okay. Can we move this to done, or do you want me to leave it here, guys, until you actually publish it? Uh, yeah, just leave it there. It'll remind okay. me to post it. Okay. Uh, failing user deletes all alarms. Ken, what was that? Uh, that was a PR from me. Full request. And it might be merged already, already I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this can be done. Another one like that, too. What's the next one? Uh, I might have I might have already. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a couple the of times. Yeah. And so the process status class, um, I have not looked at it. It's on my it's on my list to review, but I have not. And I've I've given some feedback to OK, and I, I think he's given me some feedback back, and I haven't just haven't circled all the way back around. So. Um, and. This other one here is real is reliant on the process status stuff to be merged. So it's uh, mer document backup system for precise data. Joshua is has that been reviewed by anybody? Well, I read it. Did anyone else read it? <laughs> yeah, I, I put it in the conference. It's not a matter of whether you read it. It's a matter of whether you were able to restore from it. It's not, it's not designed to restore. It was just a documentation of the process 
by which we're backing up along with five new tickets for the things that we should improve in the future. So, so who should review this? Me, since I'm doing the work behind it? It's, it's a one page document, but yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. And you should be able to log into this backup server here and see everything coming through. It's by no means a comprehensive backup system, but I am, I do have a clone of your data. So here, and it is updating itself nightly. Okay. Did, did you see my email about what the different wake word directories were for? Joshua? I did not. My in I did not. My inbox has 550 new emails in it today. Okay. Well, I responded to your initial message. Just so if you want to find it directly, there's some explanations in there. Um, answer some of your questions. My uh, my solution to the problem was just to be a data whore and take everything. That's that's fine. For now. You can always I think that's it. good, and I think it's good that we have a ticket to review the documentation. I think it's bad we don't have a ticket to validate that the data has actually been backed up successfully. <laughs> All right, um, that sounds like something that you could do. I would strongly recommend giving it to Chris since he's changed the way everything's structured and I have to spend some time coming up to speed on it and I'm a little bit overloaded right now, but uh, if you want, you can give it to me and just set it to a lower priority, that's fine. Um, know, this, is this related to the process status stuff too, Gaz? Uh, no, that one's done. Oh, it's done? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is another pull request that was merged. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we're down to a smaller. What about this, this patent thing? Is that still being worked on? Uh, that was just kicking it to someone for review. I don't know if Ken, you've had a chance to look at it, but or if anyone else wants to have a look at it. I did and I commented. Oh. I did not see the comments. Damn you, Google Docs. All right, cool. I'll go have a look at that. All right, I'll sign this back to you then, Giz. OK. Um, in progress. Um, Derek, you have a couple things here for Mark II documentation. Yeah. Um, well, so I'm still kind of owing candy LED specs mostly for our different. Uh, we kind of roughly identified it. But I, I want to shape it up, so I've got that in there. And then the long gestating requirements doc for the format to which this all of this stuff is a subset of. Um, should I, I mentioned this to, to Michael? Um, um, yes, we kind of it. Cool. So I just I kind of want to get it to a point where we can do that. Um, so that we're all kind of agreeing to what this thing's doing. Um, so that would be good to get done this week, I think. Derek, what I didn't uh, see in there is whether you want to, how do you want to identify that the mute mic is active versus inactive? And are you intending upon doing any kind of visual validation that the device is in a listening mode? Right, yes. And we do, like, so we have some of that already in the Mark 1. Um, listening is an animation. Um, and we'll we'll base things to uh, animation. So for the Mark 2, the intention would be to do something to LEDs. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that when Micro's not doing anything, it's just going to be sitting there. So the LEDs active, plus, of course, the mic's be. Um, but yeah, the, the doc would cover all of that. So, you know, say, hey, my crop, LEDs light up, indicates that it's listening, um, et cetera. And then after, you know, you say you're, you know, maybe if it, if it has to, you've got a thinking state in the Mark 1. So that's, you know, if it takes a while to respond to you, 
And that that is uh, something that I want us to do with the market too as well. So after it's done listening, I transition to that depending on the latency, et cetera. Okay, so we need to get this doc done quickly because uh, the microcode that's going to be in the firmware for the LED controller, um, we don't currently have a way of reflashing that once it's once that controller has you know been programmed. Uh, it can be reprogrammed. It's just that it can't be reprogrammed over the I2C bus. So uh, so every one of these devices right now you know is going to be using that firmware. The more devices we have out there that need to get that firmware reflashed, the more annoying it's going to be. So we need to have a good right. spec on how to use those LEDs, at least a first pass. Um, that uh, uh, so you know we're not setting up uh, a bunch of devices that aren't going to be able to support this. And I see that Kevin's when Kevin's demoing it, he's running something like you know he does. Oh yeah, no, he like he built something. He can do it, but yeah. like you know, if you want to have lights that you know pulse slowly or have them all turn on and off at the same time or whatever, you know, sure. and, um, you know, I imagine well, it's a fairly high bandwidth uh, system that he's using right now. I want to keep it well, simple. I would, you know, we don't. Yeah, want to I do... would. I would. I'd advocate for we just do the brightness and the color of the LEDs on the bus and dump a and just dump a, a packet or I don't know how ITC processes information, but for lack of a better word, a packet and have have it unpack the however many lights there are out of the packet, and that way. You know, we can refresh it at 30 hertz or whatever speed we need, and we don't have to worry about the animations being being built into the firmware. Yeah, we can do that. Because then we then we don't we don't have this piece of firmware sitting out there that like we we could have this capability if we had just you know. I'm on the um, phone thought of it now, we, you know, instead we just write the entire, the entire state of the LED array as one data packet, um, which doesn't really have to be that big. I mean, you're talking, uh, however many, it's not a lot of bits anyway. Uh, and then we just, we just, you know, update it periodically and yeah, that's, that'll that's allow us to glow. Yeah. It'll allow us, sure. Yeah. Guys, close the door and get out right now. Okay, cool. One. Well, and, and so to close the door. On the design side, we just want to keep it as simple. It might blink a little bit. Might use. I've seen Kevin doing this kind of spinning thing. I think for thinking or for loading, that makes sense. So, um, yeah. But like Michael says, I need to get it. You know, I need to get it down on paper. So. <clears throat> All right, um, Michael the. Linux first run of dev kits, is that plan completed? Um, it is not. Uh, I need to have a uh, another discussion with, uh, with Kevin uh, about that. Uh, basically, we need to finalize what our PCBA vendor is going to be, and we had some problems with the, uh, the last one we chose. So, um, so I need to revise that. All right. Guys, how's Lingua Franca 3.0 going? Uh, yeah, good. I put some dot points in there about what's remaining. Um, so we've we've got a chance has got a draft, um, like an example integration with Microsoft Core, um, so that we can make sure that uh, there's no breaking changes before we actually cut the release. Um, and so, and there's a little update to the weather skill that has to happen. Um, because of some of that weirdness that uh, has previously been done, like passing lang equals none kind of thing. Um, so yeah, just got a. I think there's four unit tests failing in, in core at the moment, um, which I haven't looked into yet. But I don't anticipate them being a big issue. Um, and then yeah, we'll cut a, a final point two release and then the point three release. And, Machine. All right. What about the benchmarking? Well, I've got you. Uh, yeah, I've got a, I've got a few things. Um, particularly from a DJ, is is done um, a bunch of stuff. Um, I want to do some extra things so that we can actually do a as much as possible a side by side 
kind of comparison. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, so it's still in progress, I'd say. Okay. But we should probably also think about yeah, what, where where to from there, or um, yeah. Can precise model validation tools? Can you open that? Scroll down to the bottom. What's the actual um, ticket number? I'm pretty it's sure this is precise it. 18. PREC 18. Yep. Bear with me, Jira is not the fastest. This one on it. Uh, last, to the note in the ticket says you're waiting for Chris Vera to get back with you on. Uh, file naming or directory stuff. Yeah, let me just see why I might have said that. Um, well, okay, anyway, it seems like something that's not on the top of your mind, so let's just carry it forward and uh, maybe- yeah, I'm let's... sorry, it's just Jira. It just takes okay. forever. Um, no, I mean, I'm, it probably has to do with waiting for the tag samples to be available. Horrible. All right, uh, Gez, news and singing skills error. Uh, yeah, these these were um, waiting on that process status stuff. Um, but we've also have also done some fixes uh, with some other errors that were happening um, around tests bleeding over into future tests, and so. I'm going to take another look in the context of that because potentially there's something there. And now that we've got the, the micro flogs and stuff, so I need to get back to this. It just hasn't happened since I've, I've done that fix. So. Okay, skill day time randomly failing. Uh, that's in the same class. Like it's, yeah. it's it, yeah, it was only failing on the on the CI process and stuff. So the PCBA for SJ201, it sounds like we already talked about that, Michael. We said we should take, you're going to talk to Kevin about that. Yeah, which ticket are you looking at in particular? Oh, yeah, oh, there it is, yeah. Um, yes, exactly, that's still in process. Okay, uh, camera mode evaluation, Derek? Um, I haven't finished that yet. Still okay. in progress. Uh, implementing Tagger GUI A, I was able to implement the changes that we talked about on Friday in our meeting, um, with the exception of how to get from one question to the next, where it's obvious that we've switched questions. Um, so I'm looking at an Angular as an animations um, library. I'm looking at doing something like sliding one in, sliding another one out, or something like that. Um, so that is the only thing left to do for this uh, GUI implementation that I can think of. OK, great. Um, <clears throat> so what's our process for getting that out in front of uh, the rest of us to test and then getting it out to the community to test and then rolling it out? Yeah, so as soon as I get the animation coded up, then it's, it's going to go in a PR. And then once it gets in the PR, um, you know, I just need to get it into a, a dev branch, and then I need to do a, a push and get everything, all the database tables, all the back end code, all the front end code, get it all in the test. And then there's, there's a, I can give you guys URLs to, I'll probably need some data too. I mean, I think, I don't know, some sort of test um, folder in the, in the, uh, on the NAS that can, I can get to test files with. Um, so there's a little work to do to get all that set up so that we can test with it, but that's 
what I'm planning on doing this week. That so we don't accidentally pollute the data source if if something's not working correctly. Is that the thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Well. We, yeah. It's good to have, especially if we're going to be doing tag and tag. You don't want to, you don't want to, <laughs> you know, if you're just testing something, you could indirectly tag it, you know, just to test something. So I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, point some production data to test the tagger. Well, when we deploy it for internal testing, we should be using it. Mm, well, we may want to test some malicious use as well, right? So we'll have to. Uh, yeah, and if anybody has the uh, has the bandwidth to do it, point your uh, point your device at the test API as well, so you can you can submit your own samples. Because part of part of this change is the you know the collection of submitted samples as well. So um, that would be useful to test. I have been pointing mine at a, a completely non-existent um, URL to test out the you know. Hey, Mycroft. How that works and what seems to be fine. So just FYI. Address. Okay. The personal pronoun used yeah, is the second my, uh, person personal pronoun, both singular okay. and plural. I should and finish, nominated finish this today, hopefully, and then um, move on to getting everybody um, set up so they can hey, Mycroft. test it themselves. Hey, Mycroft. Uh, what is your IP address? Providing update service from Mark 2, Joshua. My network IP address is still working on that. Panticore has built our update service for us, uh, and I spent some pretty significant time working inside of uh, Bolina in the last week. I uh, still haven't heard back from, from Ubuntu about some of the questions that I asked, so it's still open. Okay. Um. All prototypes should have an enclosure and core version in account device settings. I know we've talked about this. What's the status on this, Ken? So this is the um, ticket where we're going to try to capture more about the surrounding environment than we do right now when we pair a device. Is that correct? Yeah, we pair device, what are the enclosure and core version numbers? Yeah, now? and there's nowhere to report that information to right now. So until such time as we have an API that will accept that additional input, I haven't moved forward on it. That probably was in progress. I would put it out of in progress because I don't see that API being available to Sprint. Well, what, the API that, that would take that information is the, for example, the wake word submission API, right? No, 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 no. This is um, the enclosure. This is the reporting of what environment we are running in. What version of core, what's the operating environment is the Mark 1 and Mark 2? Is it your laptop, whatever? Problem is we don't have an API to handle that extended enhanced information right now. That would have to be done during pairing, I assume, since it doesn't change, but until that API exists, there's no need to do the actual work to post to a non-existent API. So my recommendation is to take it from in progress and put it to do. Okay, let's take let's put um, it in to do and right. set up a, a short meeting to discuss that because I think that it's something that we can implement, but we we need to design it first. Yeah, we just need a backend API that will take that information. If we if we're only talking about the platform like a platform designator like Mark II and then a version number for the platform and then a core version number, all of those things already exist in Selene. Correct. Okay. But if you look at the ticket, there's more information than that, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. I'll set up a meeting to talk about that this week. The weather, the weather skill is a bit of a nightmare. It's like, it's a terrible thing. It, just lots of people working on it over the years. Um, so I've started refactoring it a bit 
Um, I don't want to. I know we don't want to like do a huge fix of skills, but um, anyway, the problem comes down to like the way that we're we're pulling in data and uh, trying to get a forecast for a previous day. Um, anyway, I'm I'm working on it still. The assumption is forecast from previous days are always 100% accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's just that the API is like, we, we don't have a forecast for yesterday because that's not a forecast, you know. OK. Um, Ken, the next two are yours. The view architecture of core with respect to boot up and drivers. Thank you. Um, can you open the ticket? I'm sorry, I just don't have my large screen. I was supposed to be back at the house today and I can't read it. Um, yeah, this is still in progress. This is, this is a beast. BK test for wakeboard tagging. So, yeah, so I've been VK testing, um, but <laughs> not for tagging because to the best of my knowledge, tagging's not ready to be tested yet. Uh, I, not, nor is upload. Did I hear earlier that the upload wake word is API is working in test or no? Um, it's the code is merged into dev. I don't know if it's in test or not, I'll have to check. So um, yeah, what I've been doing is, uh, and I'll just give you my status, I guess, while I'm here. This is what I've been working on, but I refactored the uh, stuff we had for precise. I broke it out into three things, precise performance, precise, precise operation, precise upload. Uh, everything's working uh, except for precise upload, which once I turn the URLs on, they should work. So that's what I had done, but leave this ticket open because I'm also going to be adding the wake word tagging stuff into those tests as well. Um, I'm assuming, and, and I don't know that this is a valid assumption, that the tagging tests will run in a different location than our current VK integration tests, which in core, is that correct? Yep. And is there a reason for that? Because the code's all in Selene. Okay, but Selene's a back-end service that can be tested from core, right? Uh, not that tagging stuff has nothing to do with core. Ah, that's true, okay. So yeah, then that'll be uh, located in a different place once it's ready to go. But I haven't started those yet, so leave this open. Okay. And Josh, you're still working on the third party <coughs> management. So what's the difference between the canonical between Mark II 171 and Mark and MYC 459? One should be a subset of the others. Okay. The canonical is a subset of the other ticket. It was created before it, though. So. Yeah, one, one of the, you know, the one you were just asking about, the Mark II 171 ticket is, that's the overarching one, right? We need to find a, you know, find a system that we're gonna use for updates. And then I believe he's got separate tickets for each different system that he's evaluating. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so um, this is super exciting. Uh, I can already tell that we have either bitten off more than we can chew or kind of gotten distracted along the way here. Um, I think that we should just roll this sprint into the next one, let's close this one out, um, and just move all these tickets over into number 17. And rather than trying to add new things um, uh, and try to fill out the, the two weeks, I think let's just take this week and try to close out all of these tickets. Um, and anything that's not closable this week, um, we should, um, you know, rethink. Um, maybe it's uh, maybe it needs to be split up into, you know, separate tickets, or maybe it's just things that need to be kicked back into the uh, to do. Um, but uh, you know, if we're not making you know enough progress on these things, there's got to be a reason that. It's either you know lack of lack of time or uh, something's blocking them. Yeah, I've been wondering if, if like especially with the 
with the tagger, for example, you know, that there's hundreds of lines of code I've written for that that probably could be split up into smaller tickets to really show my progress. <laughs> you know, and I wonder if that's the case for some of these other things that we, we we're making the tickets big enough that you know that they're spanning multiple sprints. Um, just a, a observation. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm less worried about uh, demonstrating progress. I'm assuming everyone's doing good work, but I, I am more concerned about um, uh, things getting lost in the shuffle because there's too many things open and people are working on too many different things at one time. So let's, let's just close some things out and, uh, and clear some path ahead of us for getting more stuff done. I had a chance to figure out what we were talking about earlier when I couldn't see the ticket. That was the automate thing, and that's simply that that's ready to go, except I'm waiting for the API to be able to grab the file to determine whether we want to continue training or not. So that ticket's remaining open until that code is done, the, uh, <clears throat> and then I can actually close that out by validating that it made it through a run. Okay, that sounds like another thing you should connect with Chris Bear on, uh, just to go through and check your assumptions regarding that. API and see if what he has implemented will satisfy those or if you need to do something else. Yeah, Chris, is that API ready or not yet? Uh, <coughs> it is, I mean, it'll be, have a PR here in, in a little while. Um, so if you want, you can review the PR first <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, like I said, this week, I, I plan on getting everything into our test environment. So. All right, if you can just uh, uh, matter most me the uh, PR request link, I can take a look at it and see what the API is providing and, and do a quick once over. That, that would, that would okay. work out great. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'll provide just a little update on the Mark II. Um, Before the, you go, Michael, did you add the ticket for the new Mark II enclosure to this sprint? Yeah, I've got a list of tickets I'm gonna add in a minute. Okay. Okay, I, I completed 616, we're now on 17. I'm gonna go ahead and start it so we can start logging work to it, um, so. All right. Okay, so a quick update on the Mark II. Um, the SJ201s uh, that we sent out for the US-based manufacturer and uh, paid a pretty penny to get done in very fast turnaround have um, not been delivered yet, not even shipped. They're running into some problems with their double-sided assembly. Um, and uh, Kevin's currently debugging that. Fortunately, Kevin also uh, very cleverly ordered a backup set of boards from a Chinese manufacturer and they came in first. And so over the weekend, uh, he was able to get, uh, get it up and running. So uh, we've got some uh, he sent us some demo videos uh, of that, and so the system is fully working, and uh, he's sending those to Ken, uh, or, you know, today. So Ken should get them, you know, within a day or two, um, and uh, we can start getting that enclosure code working. So, uh, so Ken, uh, you've got you got a couple days to uh, clear your schedule for uh, getting to work on that. Um, yeah, I spoke with Kevin before the okay. meeting, and they'll be here tomorrow morning. And he's sending me one of each, one jumper to behave the old way and one jumper to behave the new way. I'll just mm -hmm. leave it at that. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll, we'll still be able to use the boards we're getting from the more expensive U.S. manufacturer. We'll or just get them later, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, that, that, that's that's, that's my understanding. Bullshit. Unfortunate, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah Are no. we going after them for the for the additional rush fees and everything else? Um, like I'm get gonna, them all that stuff back. If I mean the the value is you can deliver it quickly. If you can't deliver it quickly, then we'd expect right. it at the appropriate price. I we have to I have to figure out what the exact problems are. It may have been related to the uh, the double sided assembly and not just to you know the turnaround uh, because all the boards that we've gotten working so far we've only had the PCBA you know uh, factory assemble one side and then Kevin's hand soldered the second side. So they may be running into some design problems with our boards, uh, you know, that uh, they just don't show up when you're only assembling one side on the automated automated line. So uh, 
if uh, if we can if it comes down to that, then um, you know then it's probably not their fault. Uh, but um, but yes, uh, I, I will definitely have, have a very keen interest in making sure that um, we're not paying for something that we didn't get. <coughs> Uh, so that being said, we should have uh, 10 of those boards uh, out by the, well, in the next couple of days. Kevin's actually got another project he's got to work on. Um, so by Wednesday, I think he's going to send out 8 or 10 more boards uh, to the rest of the team. Um, well, probably to Derek uh, to get turned into things, although maybe we'll send half to Josh to, uh, depending on what, what, how your 3D printers have been working. Uh, but we'll figure that out. Send me a bare board, because I, I have it in Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I well, my my three D printers are working. My three D printers are working okay. The uh, I haven't started. I'm printing enclosures as fast as the little printer can print, and I put a new print head on that guy after six years. The other one was Derek. It was this nasty black mess of gross, and it's printing. It's printing great. Here's a here's a a new enclosure from you, or for the. Um, for the Mark II, um, I'm writing a memo right now on strategy, so we, we definitely need to talk about that, but I'm super excited to have everybody out, um, and actually, like, like walking out of this, this get-together with a working Mark II, like, hey, it, it works, um, because there's a couple of blockers on the sales side of things that that we need to resolve, and, and in order to resolve them, we need a, a working Mark II. Just one, but we need one that works. Why are you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's just like I said, let's spend the rest of this week um, working on the tickets that you uh, th that we've inherited from last sprint, and we will um, uh, let's we'll check in on Friday and. Uh, See, see where we are and, and what we're going to do for the next uh, half of the sprint. Uh, that'll also give uh, us some time to know where the Mark II is as well. This meeting wasn't nearly long enough, so let me bring a couple of points up. The first is somebody mentioned something about firmware and burning. The uh, current model or the next version of the board we have coming out has a separate microprocessor on it. And the only way to change the code on that after it leaves Daddy, our factory what does that symbol mean? is um, the K with symbol? additional hardware. You know, so the game symbol. It is not programmable in the field. Mm. And there is no easy way to make it field programmable at the current time without additional hardware. Mm. And speaking to your point, Josh, um, if you want to leave after their summit, with working Mark IIs, we should probably figure out if we're gonna use the Kivi or QT image and get somebody working on a soft keyboard if that's the solution for Wi-Fi setup. Because I'm gonna, in research I did on that, is indicative of the fact that it is not going to be a trivial one day issue. Yeah, so the Wi-Fi setup, we do have a solution for that. So if we can get into that. And the Kivi versus QT thing, I sent a back channel message in the middle of this meeting to Michael, and that is entirely on Michael's desk. So um, I, I will I will defer. If you were to have me make a decision today, I'd be happy to give it to you, but it's not my, my call. No, all I'm getting at is that that decision is going to drive how your soft keyboard is going to be implemented. And at some point in time, somebody should probably evaluate whether in our environment the soft keyboard will work at all. Um, I started down that path I don't, a week ago, but that interrupted. I don't really, I don't honestly don't care okay. if the soft keyboard works. So okay. I, I'm firmly in the Chris Bayer camp of we should not require a keyboard for our thing to work. Um, we, we are a voice company. Um, I do agree with requiring a second device. But Bellina publishes a Wi-Fi setup that we can use right out of the box. You know, we're probably going to have to spend right around a day hacking on it to get it to work where we, you know, provided our chipset works. But it's designed for Raspberry Pi 4, so I don't anticipate that being an issue. Um, on the Kibi QT stuff, you already have my answer on that. But that, the, the getting a working Mark II working in this sprint is not a 
like, hey, that would be nice sort of thing. It's like, a, hey, if we're going to have jobs next year, we need to make this thing work. Like, we've, we've been goofing off with, with this. Uh, maybe uh, it's probably not the right word, but we've been working on getting something out for a really long time. And the places where we need to be focusing our effort, according to the financial model that Johnny and I ran this morning, is on adding value added services to get people onto our subscription. If we cannot get to the point where people, where we're adding value and people subscribe, then we're done. We're done. So we need to get the Mark II out because that's the blocker for subscription. That's the blocker for getting out in the retail. That's the blocker for starting to focus on mobile devices. Like there's all these other things that are blocked by this. So we really need to get unblocked. And I have every confidence that if we put everybody here in this shop, I probably need some more tables. Um, if we put everybody here in this shop and just sprint, like I, I think we can get amazing things done. I have, I have a lot of confidence in everybody. Yeah, I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. So you're saying the Wi-Fi setup's a trivial issue. Don't worry about it. You're on top of it. <laughs> Wi-Fi well, hey, setup is a trivial, a trivial issue. I have confidence that once we, we approach the problem as we're implementing an existing library, that you can get it done in a very short time frame. Well, I would feel a lot more comfortable if you forward me some documentation so I could potentially sign up for that. Well, so if we get this, if we get the audio stuff working sure. on the SJ201, there's a lot of stuff we can look at. You know, we can look at the cute image that Gez has been working with uh, the guys. Well, you know, I've been kind of in there too, but working with the guys, uh, Blue Systems, to see what can be pared down to make it run faster. Um, the soft keyboard works on that. Um, we can evaluate all kinds of stuff. Just we just got to get Yeah, I'm just assuming that we're not going to be using a soft keyboard for putting in a Wi-Fi password. Somebody has a solution that's using a secondary device, and the assumption is that that's just all ready to go out of the box. So I just sent it to you in WhatsApp. I just sent it to you in WhatsApp. Have a look. Uh, Jarvis, Jarvis has offered help to pull the Mark One enclosure stuff out too. Um, so I think we should definitely take him up on on that offer. Um, yeah, just means we need to we need to have a good idea ourselves about what that enclosure looks like. So, which is already a ticket in there. So, what do you mean by pull it out? Uh, just you know how there's all the Mark One code like sprinkled through Microsoft Core. Mm -hmm trying to pull that out into an actual enclosure code, you know, its own enclosure code. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does Jarvis, does, does Jarvis want to uh, come visit Hawaii for a couple of weeks? <laughs> why don't you, Maybe. why don't you put that on the table? We, we can't pay, uh, we can't pay salaries and stuff, but if he wants to come sprint with us for 12 days and agrees to kind of focus on the focus areas where we're focused on, um, he can be our virtual GEZ interface. So <laughs> he can be here and, and do some work. But yeah, I, I'd be, yeah. I, I certainly would be open. And I think that the, the amount of input that we could get from having another developer who's thoroughly, thoroughly familiar with core far outweighs the cost of tickets to Hawaii and lodging for 12 days. So um, you want to you want to clear that with Michael. Michael, you have, not to put you on the spot. You, you know what? Michael and I had a whole conversation about about. How, oh, he just said yeah. Okay, so yeah, offer it up. I don't know where he is. Where is he? Uh, Portugal. Uh, oh, well, I don't know sure. if he'll be allowed to get across there, but yeah. I, I'm sure I think that that may be. 
yeah, make the offer and then, you know, it, let him know it was in good faith, but I didn't realize he was in Portugal. If he was anywhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might not be doable. Right. Yeah. And be sure to um, just put a put a tweet out there to the real Donald Trump to thank him for the fact that he can't go to Hawaii. Yeah. We did also talk about uh, implementing, doing using the plugin system for enclosures and whether that could be a a, a useful idea. Um, so just throwing that yeah, out there. We'll have a bigger discussion about what enclosures look like. All right. Sounds like there's some big discussions to have. <laughs> well, there is a an interesting idea about creating a new branch of a new experimental branch of Microsoft Core that is, you know, free for our community team to just merge whatever you know features they want into it so that they can like go to town on on playing around with things Isn't um, that what fork yeah it, it would be a centralized fork um yeah anyway yeah. Uh, the whole yeah. idea would be it would be like everything in here can break at any moment. It might be reverted at any moment. Is it like, it would either be, it lives in our repo or it lives in like Jinx's, Jinx or Jarvis's repo or something like that. But I guess the benefit of doing if it, it, it kind of helps if keep, it's, keep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if it's going to live in anybody's repo, I'm very open to hosting it internally. If it's going to get done anyway, um, I'd yeah. rather, I'd rather keep it in house. My, my thinking is that it, it reduces the chance of a a non -com, uh, of an actual fork of the project, and then you know them trying to run their own thing and blah blah blah. Anyway, I I I don't want to get into that discussion right now. Though I just thought I'd you know throw out something to keep the meeting going. Is Jarvis playing a hostile takeover? Is that what you're telling me? Well, no, they they intentionally don't want to. Um, they like they they want the ability to you know add in all these things that they're playing with, but they understand that we need to test things properly and that we have limited capacity to to test all that sort of stuff. And um, they don't actually want the project to fork and become you know separate and then become uh, the kind of thing where you can't actually become you know diverges so far that, that things no longer work from one to the other and. Um, they know that that is bad for the project, so um, yeah. I think it's a you know, because master is is fully state is our production branch. Dev is going to be production. We don't want to merge things in there if, if they're going to break. And so this would be like, you know, you could like, they could, they could merge things in there without, without one of us reviewing them and it breaks and everyone that's using that throws their hands up in the air. Yeah. Anyway. So Josh, this uh, this code, you, this this link you sent me from Belina assumes we have a working access point. Chris, is there a working access point currently in the uh, Mark II image? Um, keep in keep in mind, Ken, that the Belina code is written for Raspberry Pi four. So it's it, the, the, the there's some questions in there of like, hey, does your platform support like if it's a feature in there, it works on Pi. So you don't need to ask the question. It, it works on Pi. But if we were working like some other rando board, yes, you, that would be a good question to ask. It is what Microsoft OS uses, which is now called the Open Voice Operating System. Jinx's, yeah, Microsoft-based OS. That's what they use. So it can work. 
Sounds like and everybody's more confident. You want to make sure that's that's our friend who was using the brand with with uh, where we hadn't published the brand standards yet, and so he he was just, he was experimenting with our stuff. Um, yeah. I do want to I do want to make sure, and I don't know if we made the offer. You know, we can officially endorse like help with that side of things. We just can't have them use the brand. So if if yeah, yeah. we have our brand yeah. our brand use guidelines, okay, like it, it, we're not trying. I want to make sure that very, they, he was very happy with it. He fully understood. Um, they're, okay. they're and we'll write a okay, and we'll write a blog post about how awesome he is and the whole bit. Like I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. I thought we'd add it to our community releases section on the get Minecraft even potentially. Um. Anyway, uh, he's doing really cool stuff in that in that project though. Uh, so it, it is QT based, but it doesn't it doesn't ha even have a plasma session running. Um, I think he's writing directly to the frame buffer somehow. But anyway, this is unintentional delaying the end of the meeting now. So <laughs> I, I I mean I'm just, I'm concerned more concerned than everybody else. I sure would like to have a meeting on how we expect this Wi-Fi stuff to work. I don't, it doesn't have to be this meeting, but it's, I think it would be helpful to have that meeting before we get out to Hawaii. I I share your concern. I just didn't didn't think right now is the time. <laughs> well, we got two we got two more weeks. <laughs> Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs.